wrong with monster trucks. Ray has a entire giant collection of those too. Give Miss Melanie a round of applause.
thought I noticed some words in those songs that we were singing. Joyful, joyful. Are you joyful this morning? Amen. About half of you. Are you joyful this morning? Amen. Go tell it on the mountain that Christ is born. And that's the greatest message that we can share with anyone. That Christ is born. He has been resurrected. And he's alive today with us. So let's go to him in prayer right now. Lord Jesus, we love you so much. We're here to worship you in spirit and in truth. We ask that you would guide and direct us through this service, that we would glorify and magnify your name. Jesus, I pray for those that are here today that may not know you as their personal Lord and Savior, that today would be the day that they trust in you and give their life to you and be changed forever because of who you are. Jesus, because we know you, we tell others about who you are. Because you're in our hearts, you will be on our lips. And we thank you for the Christmas season where we're reminded of you coming into this world and ultimately dying on the cross for our sins. We ask that we'd be full of your Holy Spirit, that you would guide and direct us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated here. For those of you that are watching us online, thank you for being a part of the service today. Uh, you may not check on this, but periodically I check on this, and we know that just about every Sunday, someone that you're familiar with that no longer lives here, Grace Long, usually watches us here at First Baptist Church, and many others that see what's going on in this church, and so thank you for being a part of the service today. You sing as we sing praises to the Lord in this building.
thank you for this day, Lord. We thank you for this breath, Lord. Lord, we thank you for your son, Jesus, Lord, that was born in Bethlehem. And this, this time of Christmas, Lord, we, we celebrate that birth of your son, Jesus Christ, Lord. Lord, we also are so thankful for what he done on the cross, Lord. He, he died for us, died for our sins, Lord. And Lord, I just ask that you be with Brother Nathan, Lord, as he brings your, brings your message, Lord. May we receive it with enthusiasm, Lord. May it speak to our lives. May we go out and be doers of the word, Lord, and not just hearers. Lord, I just, I want to ask that this offering be a blessing to you, Lord. May the church give cheerfully, Lord, all to you, because it, it's all for you and it all belongs to you. Lord, just be with the sick throughout the community in this world, Lord, and be with the country and forgive us for where we fail you. And all these things we ask in your holy and precious name. Amen.
Thank you, Melanie, for that song. We are reminded this morning about the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so this morning, I am going to be talking about what I believe to be the greatest event in human history. Now, I want you to think about this question in your mind, what is the greatest event in human history? Some would say that it would be the victory that we had in the world wars. For others, it would say sending a man to the moon. Some of you this morning, without a doubt, would say the saints winning their first and only Super Bowl. The greatest event in human history, that is a great event that we celebrate. Maybe some of you would say the day you were born, that's a great event in history. For some of you would say that it was a day that you said, I do. You would say that that would be the greatest event in history. But this morning, I want to share with you what I believe is the greatest event in human history. So take your Bibles and turn to Matthew chapter 1. I want you to stand as we read in honor of God's word this morning. And even though you may be familiar with these passages of scripture, I would say to you that just because you've heard the story doesn't mean that you understand the story. Matthew chapter 1, beginning in verse 18. The Bible says, Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. So all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. Then Joseph, being aroused from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord commanded him and took to him his wife. And did not know her until she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. Now turn, if you would, to Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14. If you can't get there, just listen. Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14. Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. Emmanuel. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your holy word. We thank you that your word is the authority in our life. No individual, no group of people, but your word is the authority in our life. Help us to receive what you have recorded in your word. Help us to allow the Holy Spirit to remove the spiritual blinders that we may have this morning to this truth so that we can live out truth and be changed because of who you are, because you are with us always. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated here. Christmas is a reason for love. If any other time of the year, Christmas should be a time that we are reminded of the love that we have for God and for each other. Now, many of you, in the next several days, you will be meeting with family members, I hope and pray, and you will appreciate the family that God has given to you, good, bad, or indifferent. They are your family. You did not choose them. God chose them for you. And as we think about God's choosing in our life, we know that this morning that we're not here by accident, but we're here for divine purpose. Before the very foundation of the world, God knew that you would be here 
in this service at First Baptist Church leading up to Christmas. Now, what you do in this service will have eternal consequences. You can listen to this story that you've maybe heard many times in your life, and you can let it go in one ear and out the other and not be changed. Or you can allow this story to change your life forever and allow this story to be told by you to change other people's life forever. You see, that is the reason for the story. The reason for this story is love. And what we will see this morning is that Jesus makes the invisible God known to man. The Bible says about God that he is spirit. And those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. But Jesus came to reveal who God is in the flesh. And so as we worship Jesus, we know that we are worshiping God. And when you worship God, you know that he transforms our lives. When you encounter who God is, you can't be the same. You see, he changes you from the inside out. When you praise and worship who he is, you know that there is no one like him. So this morning, I'm going to lay on your heart three significant ways that God provides love. First of all, God provides love with a sign. A sign. The sign would be the virgin birth. In fact, Isaiah records seven to eight hundred years before the virgin birth even happens. It is a prophecy that is given that this day is going to take place. If you know anything about Isaiah the prophet, you know that he was a counselor from 740 to 680 BC. And this prophecy that is recorded was given during the time of Ahaz. So it provided a foreshadowing of the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and also fulfillment during the day of Ahaz. So as I said last week with Micah, 800 years before the birth of Christ, in Isaiah, seven to 800 years before the birth of Christ, a prophecy is given, a sign would be that a virgin would conceive and bear forth a son. Now I want you to think about that, the totality of that. The prophecy was given through a man, a man chosen by God, filled with the Spirit of God, allowing God to speak through him to say that one day this is going to happen. Church family, I've told you, from Genesis to Revelation, God has people that he chooses to speak on his behalf. And how we respond to those people is how we oftentimes respond to God himself. Now, we try to make a distinction between man and God. But this morning, I want you to know that Jesus Christ is God and he is man. He came in the flesh. The Bible says that his name would be called Emmanuel, meaning that God is with us. He would manifest his presence among his people. And this morning, if you haven't really grabbed a hold of this in your heart and mind, I want you to think about this. It is the truth of God's word that God is with us. Now, let me tell you something. If you can't get excited about God being with us, you can't get excited about anything. God is with us. He is revealing himself to us. The Holy Spirit is moving and working among us. And let's be careful, dear friends, because some people have become dull to the things of God. And I'll tell you this, it's more exciting than Christmas Day than to be in the presence of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, knowing that God is with us. The anticipation, the excitement. You see, the sign here is the virgin birth, which reveals that in the conception, Jesus' life was formed in the womb of Mary. And listen to this very carefully. It is the only miracle that was specifically for Jesus Christ. There would be only one virgin birth, 
And that was the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Only one. And I want you to understand the ramifications of that. Seven to eight hundred years before he was born, the prophet Isaiah said a sign would be given and a virgin would give birth. Now think about that. When you explain this to your friends, they will look at you and say, you have lost your marbles. A virgin is going to give birth, and that's exactly the Christmas story. Because the prophet said, this is the way that it would happen. Jesus would be truly human and truly divine. Take your Bibles and turn to the Gospel of John chapter 1. John chapter 1, verses 14 through 18, the Word becomes flesh. The Word becomes flesh. And John records it this way. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only Underlying the word only begotten of the Father. Full of grace and truth. John bore witness of him and cried out saying, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me is preferred before me. For he was before me. And of his fullness we have received and grace for grace. For the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son who is in the bosom of the Father, He has declared Him. So I want you to think about this. This child, Jesus, that was born, He was God and He was human. Truly human and truly divine. His Father was God that was given through the work of the Holy Spirit, and his mother was truly, absolutely, 100% human being. So think about this. This would be the son of David. Through the lineage of David, Christ would be born, thus fulfilling God's covenant with David, that one day, David, your Lineage will produce a king that will be king of kings and lord of lords. He will rule and reign forever. Forever. We are looking forward to the reign of Christ. But as we think about this sign that is given, it's a signal of reassurance. And let me ask you this morning... Don't you want reassurance in your life? If 2020 has taught us anything, for many people it has taught them that they need reassurance of their own faith. Because when times are tough, when times are difficult, who do you turn to? Who do you turn to in those difficult moments to get you through the tough times? You can turn to people, but people oftentimes will leave you disappointed. Uh, People that will report to you that we have all the scientific evidence that we need to say that this is true. But let me tell you this. There is no scientific evidence that can prove that Jesus Christ was born of a woman. You know where we get the evidence from? Let me show you. Right here. Scientists say that that is impossible. That could never happen, God interacting with human beings and thus producing a child. But I'll tell you 100%, we receive it by faith. God's word states it. It is the authority in our life. And there's no other way to know that this is true other than God's word. History books record that there was a man by the name of Jesus Christ that walked the face of the earth. But many of them would say about Jesus that he was simply just a great prophet. He did signs and wonders, but he was just a man. But my friends, the Bible tells us that he was the God-man. 100% God, 100% man. And what do you say about the prophets? 
Well, you need to know about the prophets because kings would inquire of the Lord through the prophets. If the kings wanted to know something, they would seek out godly men to say, Hey, interpret this dream for me. What does this dream mean? A prophet by the name of Daniel. Isaiah would say, this is what the Lord has to say to you. Listen very carefully, because if you fail to listen to what the Lord has to say to you, there will be consequences. And yet people shrug their shoulders at the Lord and say, oh, I don't have to listen to what the Lord says. I can do whatever I want to do. Let me tell you, when God speaks, when he gives the signal, we need to recognize the signal and listen to what God has to say. Because God is still speaking today. Failing to inquire of the Lord is a failure of faith. I want you to think about this in your own life. Have you ever done something without inquiring of the Lord? And made a terrible, misguided decision? I can tell you story after story of people that I've seen that didn't inquire of the Lord, didn't go to his word, didn't seek spiritual counsel, and thus they failed miserably because they thought they could do it their way instead of God's way. God always has a sign, and the sign would be the virgin birth, and he would make it known that deliverance comes through Jesus not through alliances or military strength. My friends, what makes America great, what makes Israel great, is not our military power, not our strength, but listen to this, ultimately, God's protection. If God does not protect us, then my friends, it doesn't matter how strong the military is, they can be destroyed in just a moment's notice. If you know anything about history, you know that the Israelites, Israelis, in the Six-Day War defeated many nations that were more powerful and stronger than them, but there's one person they didn't have on their side, and that was God. God makes himself known to us. And the Bible confirms that Jesus had a human virgin birth. Turn to Hebrews chapter 2. Hebrews chapter 2. I would encourage you to take good notes. Because if you're being the witness that Jesus has called us to be, you need to be able to show people in the Bible why you believe what you believe. And the Bible says this, Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14, Inasmuch then as the children have partaken of flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared in the same, that through death he might destroy him who had the power of death, that is the devil, and release those who through fear of death were all their lifetimes subject to bondage. For indeed, he does not give aid to angels, but he gives aid to the seed of Abraham. My friends, Jesus Christ is far above any angel. As human beings, the Bible tells us that one day we will judge angels. But Jesus Christ came in flesh and blood. The sign was being given And that sign was giving reassurance that this would happen. And we see in Matthew's gospel that Christ is born of Mary. So secondly this morning, God provides love with a son. It is the incarnation. The incarnation. So let me ask you this morning, do you believe 100% that Jesus is totally God and totally man? Because he is forever God. Forever God. Jesus didn't begin in a manger in Bethlehem. He didn't come to earth to simply just say, I was born. Because he was manifested in the manger, he revealed himself to be God in the flesh. And in John's Gospel 8, verse 58, he said, before Abraham was... 
I am. Jesus has always existed. But Bethlehem, he revealed himself in flesh and blood as being God. Now, what do you think about those during the day of Jesus when he said, I am? He is saying that I am God. They wanted him destroyed. They wanted him killed, the religious leaders, because they said he has committed blasphemy. He's not God. He's flesh and blood. We know who his mother and father are, Mary and Joseph. He was born out of immorality. Immorality. But my friends, just because people study the Bible, just because they study the law, just because they pray, when Jesus appears doesn't mean that they recognize him and honor him as the King of kings and the Lord of lords. That's why Matthew's gospel says that on the day of judgment, they will say to the Lord, didn't we do many wonderful things in your name? Didn't we do such and such? And he will say to them on that day, depart from me for I never knew you. I don't care how religious you've been. You didn't know me. You didn't serve me. You didn't live for me. And how many of us would have the faith of Joseph here and Matthew's gospel? To know that the one that you love, the one that you cared about, now says she is pregnant. She's going to give birth to a child. Would we have the faith of Joseph because initially he was going to do away with her privately, as many of us probably would. To save her the embarrassment. To save the public ridicule that she would experience because she was having a child that was not his. But we have the faith of Joseph. When he has the dream, when God reveals to him, Joseph, that which is in Mary is of the Holy Spirit. It's the Son of God. I believe many people, even though they hear the truth, yet they refuse to recognize the truth. They said, I just don't believe that. That's too good to be true. Even though we know that it had been prophesied, it had been talked about, how is that going to be humanly possible? Let me tell you something. It doesn't have to be humanly possible, but it has to be supernaturally possible. God is the one that does it. God is with his children. And that's amazing, isn't it? That we can have a relationship with the God of the universe and God will be with his children. Isaiah says in chapter 9 verse 6, he would be born a prince, a king. Now you would think that this prince would have been born in a palace. That he would have been recognized as such. But he came in a lowly state revealing to us that those that are humble, those that have a Humble origin can be greatly used by God. You study your Bible, you see that Amos the prophet was just a farmer, a country boy. But God used him to speak to the city people and say, hey, you got it all wrong. You need to repent. You need to get right with God. There's consequences for not listening to God. Isaiah says his government has no end. So if you're listening now, say amen. We didn't elect him, and we will never impeach him as Lord. You didn't elect him. You didn't make him king. He was born a king. He will always be a king. Because he is the king of kings, he's the Lord of lords. And even though you may want to impeach him, you can never remove him from office because he's prophet, priest, and king forever. Forever. Now, you may say, well, I don't have to listen to the king. I can do what I want to do. Dear friend, one day you will bow your knees in humble adoration, and you will confess Jesus Christ as Lord, and you will wish a thousand times over that you would have listened to the word of the Lord and humbled yourself in his sight so that you would live your life fully devoted to Jesus Christ. That's what it's all about. It's about Jesus. He is Lord. 
the cradle, the cross, and the crown reveal the Son. Reveal the Son. When you were just a young boy or young girl, if you grew up in church and, or you had a godly home, they taught you John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. What does that mean? The life to come is far greater than the life that we're living right now. Are you making plans? Are you preparing for the future, friends? Because none of us are promised another tomorrow, not even another day. Only what we do for Christ Jesus will last forever. Will last forever. Thirdly, God provides love with salvation. This is his plan. His plan. Now, I know that some of you like to make plans. I like to make plans. I like to to organize. I like to get things together. But listen, Joseph had his plan to privately do away with Mary, as uh, as Matthew records here. But then God had another plan. Joseph had to get in on that plan, and he said, this is being done by God. This is what is going on as I am allowing you to experience the manifested presence of God. Wow. I hope that you realize that God always has a plan. He's not in heaven wringing his hands and saying, man, what am I going to do about what's going on in the United States of America today? What am I going to do with what's going on in the Middle East today? Now, you may wring your hands, but let me assure you, God never wrings his hands. He's got it all figured out. Now, what's our responsibility? Our responsibility is to get in on his plan. Henry Blackaby said, find out where God is working and you get involved and let God bless you while you're doing his work. Jesus made his plan obvious to Joseph. God is with us, which means Jesus' name itself means that he is salvation. It means he saves. And I want you to know, the Bible says here in Matthew chapter 1, verse 21, and she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. The child would save his people from their sins. So I want you to think about this today. Why did Jesus die on the cross of Calvary for you and for me? To save us from our sins. Our sins deserve death, hell, and eternal punishment. One sin will keep us out of heaven. So Jesus came to destroy the works of darkness so that he could provide a way of salvation. And my friends, there's only one way for salvation. One way. Not many different ways. Only one way, and that's through Jesus Christ. I don't care how smart someone may be. I don't care how educated they may be. I don't even care how dumb they may be. If they don't believe Jesus Christ is the only way to salvation, then they don't understand what God is providing us with. Salvation. Hebrews 13.5 says that when you know Christ, he will never leave us or forsake us. God is always with us. Now, whether or not you want to acknowledge his presence and what he's doing in you and through you is up to you. But you need to know this. Adrian Rogers said it this way about the virgin birth. If there is no virgin birth, you are going to hell. Salvation is interwoven with a virgin birth. No virgin birth, no deity. No deity, no sinless life. No sinless life, 
no sacrificial death. No sacrificial death, no salvation. No salvation, you are going to hell. To hell. Now I realize that using that four letter word is not very popular today. But most people, my friends, are not going to heaven. They are going to hell. And we say that not with glee, not with joy, not with happiness, but with a heart that is burdened for the lost to make sure that they will spend eternity in heaven with the Lord so that they will know the way of salvation so that we will stand accountable to the Lord. As Ezekiel said, I'm the watchtower. Their blood will be on my hands if I fail to tell them about Jesus Christ. That's our responsibility. Jesus came that we might have salvation. Now, he wants all to be saved and all come to that realization that he is Lord, he is King, that he is God in the flesh. But let me just test you this morning. Let me test you. Are you excited when you think about Jesus? This morning was, was your heart beating as the story of Christ was being presented to you? Was your heart racing and saying, praise God from who all blessings flow. It is by the grace of Jesus Christ that I can have everlasting life. Or have you lost the wonder in all of who Jesus is? I'll tell you this. If you can't get excited about Jesus, I would say you may not know Jesus. You may not know him. Because the story and the anticipation and the excitement of Jesus and our salvation should never grow old. Never grow old. You say, well, when I came to know Christ, I was excited about him. But over the years, it's just the same old stuff. My friends, it's not the same old stuff. When we walk with Christ, every day is a new day. Every day is an adventure. Every day is worth living for Jesus Christ. And we get excited about him. Because we know, we know without Christ, we would all be lost in going to hell. You can't get excited about Jesus, then you may not know Jesus. Enthusiasm means to be in God, to know who he is, to, to just respect him and honor who he is. He is wonderful, wonderful. The Bible tells us in Acts chapter 4, verse 12, he is salvation. Listen to this. Nor is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Only one name, and it's the name of Jesus Christ. One name. Jesus died to save us from sin. Mary and Joseph would have to trust in Jesus as their Messiah. And bow before him as king of kings and lord of lords. Yet Joseph was his earthly father. Mary was his mother. And yet they would have to understand that this Christ child. With all these events that happened in his life. Was the fulfillment of prophecy. And they would have to be saved by one name alone. And that would be the name of Jesus. Jesus is the sweetest name I know. Don't you just love the name of Jesus? Jesus. The virgin birth, the incarnation, this plan is the gospel. There is only one cure for sin, and that's the Savior, Jesus Christ. Only one name brings salvation, and that is Jesus. This is the greatest miracle combining humanity and deity. Winston Churchill said, 
Christ's story was unequaled and his death to save sinners unsurpassed. Hmm. My friends, Jesus came to give us victory over sin. No more excuses. No more opportunities to say, I didn't know, because we do know. We've heard the reason for Christmas, and that is the love of Christ. You can trust Jesus with your life, because he has a plan. My friends, if I had a thousand lives to live, I would live each one for Jesus Christ. His plan is far greater than my plan. All I have to do is submit to his leadership and authority in my life. And you never know where you're going to go. You never know what you're going to do. You just submit. It's placed a calling in our life. And that's to make him known. To help others understand who Christ is. So the greatest event is the birth and resurrection of Christ. Why? Because of this. There's no greater, no greater expression of love. No greater expression of love. How many of you today would give your child to die for the murderer, the rapist, the drunkard, the adulterer? You said, no way. No way would I do that. But my friends, that's why Jesus came into this world. To die on the cross for our sins. So that whoever calls upon the name of the Lord, whoever, who's whoever? Whoever. You and me, we can have everlasting life. And because we know him, and the greatest story ever told, the greatest miracle ever seen, Humanity and deity being revealed to us. The name of Jesus is the greatest name I know. So with every head bowed, with every eye closed, no one looking around, no one stirring at this time, this is a very important time for us to do business with the Lord. He's with us. He's working He's drawing us to Christ, drawing us to Him. If you don't know Him, I mean really, really know Him. You will put your trust in Him. You will wake up each day saying, Jesus, how will you use me today? You will love your brothers and sisters in Christ. You will pray for them. You will want God to use them. You will want God to work in them just like he's working in you. If you don't know Jesus, tell him that you trust him with your life. Tell him that you know that he died on the cross and he resurrected the third day. Tell him that you want the Holy Spirit to take up residence in your life. And give you a new life. Allow you to become a new creation in Christ Jesus. Those of you that are watching online, you can surrender your life to Jesus. Let us know that you're wanting to give your life to Jesus. And we'll follow up with you. Maybe some of you today would say, Preacher, I know I'm saved. I know I'm saved. Are you making Jesus known? Are you telling family members and friends about him? Are you still in wonder of all of who Jesus is? Are you still excited about him? Dear friends, every day is a new day with Christ. He has great things in store for us. And the best is yet to come if we know him. Maybe you need to recommit your life to Christ today. Say, from this day forward, I'm going to be all in, Jesus. I'm going to surrender all of my life to you. I'm not going to make an excuse for my sins. I'm going to confess and repent of my sins. 
and make sure I'm in right fellowship with you. If that's you today, in just a moment, come and let me know. Come and let me know that you, you want to recommit your life to Christ. And maybe some of you need to come forward and say, I've given my life to Christ. I'm not playing church. I'm going to be the church. I'm not going to be religious. I'm going to have a relationship. If that's you, we'll celebrate as the angels in heaven celebrate your salvation. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for who you are. Thank you that this story is a story that never gets old. It's a story that reminds us of your love for us. We thank you that you are with us. You are working. You are moving. Holy Spirit, have complete control over this invitation. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I want you to stand. I want you to come and do business with the Lord. As Melanie plays, you come. Thank you so much for your kind attention. You may be seated. Those of you that have watched us today, thank you for being a part of the service. I've been keeping track closely over the last couple of weeks, and I know many have been watching us. So you're always welcome here at First Baptist Church in person. But if you can't be here in person, thank you for being here online. Just a couple of announcements before we let those go that are watching online. Uh, Our midweek service will be moved to Christmas Eve at 6 p.m., so encourage people to be a part of the service on Thursday night. We'll have the Lord's Supper, and we'll have candlelight service, and it's always great. And those of you that plan on watching tonight, tonight's service will be abbreviated. I just wanted you to know that. So thank you for watching us today. Have a wonderful day.